Welcome back to Tech Tuesday. I'm Steve Leahy. Today's edition is the gradation edition. No, not the graduation edition. No, not that. Gradation. So the ability for the airbrush to break down the paint into such fine microscopic little particles that you can make these almost seamless transitions between one color or one hue to another. It is really one of the hallmarks of what the airbrush can do better than just about any tool, at least easier. So let me give you a couple examples of that. So as um, the sky changes in color in Death of a Salesman to the way the blues transition in Golden Yarmouth and also the gas tank, the way the colors and values change to make that real 3D look in uh, Three Amigos. So those are all examples of how the airbrush really handles that transition between two colors or two values uh, really, really well, really better than any other tool that I know. Uh, so today we're going to kind of show you the basics of that to kind of help you get your gradations down well. It's one of the things that I use all the time in every painting. I mean, shading is, is, is gradations. Um, cha again, changes in color, that's the same kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to lay all that out for you. So hopefully you enjoy this and um, let's get to it. So for this first, um, for the, all the examples, I'll be using Createx black, opaque black, and I'll be reducing this with a 4011 reducer. Um, you can use whatever paint you have and whatever reducer comes with that, uh, but reduction becomes a real important thing in this because it'll change the way that these gradations work. Um, if you have a real thick paint, it's going to give you a very grainy transition as you move from one color to another. Now that's fine if that's the look you're looking for, but we're going to go for more of the smooth gradation. So I've swapped the paint out for a lot thinner version of that, just added more reducer, and this will give really an imperceptible spray. So that's kind of what we're looking for for this example. Um, again, you can do this with either. It'll just give you a different feel, uh, but this is the one I really want to kind of concentrate on because if you can get this transition or this gradation down with a real thin imperceptible paint, it makes it much easier to do something that's a little bit more grainy. It's not so much if you go the opposite. So we're going to start with that. Okay, so the idea behind reduction is a whole separate video, but what you want is basically you want the paint to be able to spray so that you can't see the droplets. It's different for every airbrush, so it doesn't, if I give you a, um, like a standard reduction rate, it's, it's just a starting point. <clears throat> um, it's individual for each airbrush. So the smaller the needle and nozzle in an airbrush, the more it's designed to do detail, the thinner the paint has to be to get it to do this. Um, so, so keep that in mind as you're kind of going through this. Any reductions that you may hear are going to be um, are going to be individual to the airbrush. So, okay. So let's uh, let's switch over and we'll get the idea down. All right. I'm going to show you this in two different ways. I'll show you with color and I'll show you with black and white. So we'll start with black and white so you can really see the anatomy of this and how this works. Uh, and it's also easier with um, just working with value because it's just you know you don't have to deal with. Uh, two different colors and how they mix. We will do that in a second, but this will be good to give you the foundation. So there are two ways to kind of attack this. Um, and the way it's usually done when you start airbrushing and you'll learn these with your fade strokes and all your basic strokes, um, people will do a fade by starting out of the top, making it really dark, and then slowly fading it away as it goes down. So that's, that's the first way to make a fade. What happens with this though, there's a kind of a trap here that as you're doing this, you maybe hit one area a little bit more than another as you're doing this fade. Say your, your chops aren't quite there. And what you end up with is a fade that has these kind of modeled gradations to them or modeled areas to them. Again, it's fine if that's the look you're going for, but what we're going for is just a completely smooth transition so that you can really get that, that technique down. So the way to avoid that is actually pretty simple. So when I'm doing a fade across a bigger area, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll concentrate on the lightest part of the fade. So the part the color will or the value will end up at. And I'll paint that whole area in that fade, in that color. 
So I'm not fading it, I'm just going down and painting the whole thing that value. Now the trick is, is to work as hard as you can to make this very even and very uh, non-blotchy essentially. So I work really lightly and I let that value build up across the whole thing, nice and even. So there's the first pass. And again, I want to kind of lean back and keep an eye on the whole thing. If there is a light spot, I, you know, I want to kind of lean into that a little bit. If there's a dark spot, I want to build everything else up, or up to it. But that seems pretty good right there. So that's the first lightest color. And you can see with the paint reduced the right way, you can't even see the little droplets of paint. It just looks like a shadow on this piece of paper, which is really nice. So that's the first one. And that's the whole area that I want to have that gradation appear in. So the second pass is going to be a little bit darker, but I'm only going to come down about three quarters of the way. I'm not going to fade into this area down here. So I'm going to start at the top a little bit darker, and then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to roll down this, this uh, area, but I'm going to stop right about there. Now I left a little fingerprint there, which is bad, <laughs> but you get the idea. So I only came down about three quarters of the way. Okay, now the next step is to come down halfway. So I'll make it a little bit darker, and then I'm going to come down about halfway through this. Okay, and finally the last one is I just do that top quarter and get that as dark as I need it to be. So what I'm left with is this really smooth gradation across the whole thing. It's nice and even and everything works so this is a for me this is a, a much more controllable way to do this fade than to try to hit it from top to bottom and have it be nice and even now i know it's nice and even because i'm building up each one of those steps now i used a few steps to get here you can use as many as you want so instead of coming down three quarters of the way you could say come down seven eighths of the way you know with the next color and then break it down into eight different gradations and that'll work too it'll just give you more control what you just got to remember is as you're moving through this, keep those all those layers really light. Let that darkest color build up because it keeps getting paint hit on each layer. You're starting at the same spot and that'll build this really, really nice smooth gradation. And this, I did it fairly large. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but this will work on any scale, you know, from the smallest area to the largest area. And it just really works well, especially works great on big, big areas because now you're not dealing with trying to keep this whole thing really even. You actually set up the even, uh, evenness of that value from the very start, which is really nice. All right, so let's take a look at color. Okay, so for the good news is color works pretty much the same exact way. So let's do a sky, or we'll do a gradation in a sky, or just a nice blue summer sky. So what I'm gonna start out with is the lightest color. So this is the color that will be down by the horizon, uh, minus a little bit of extra atmospheric perspective which we could put in which is a little bit of white but for the most part this is going to be the the, the, the lightest color in our sky and I just mix this up with a little bit of um, opaque white and a uh, tiny bit of uh, daylight blue from Createx but again you can you could use literally any colors to do this but you want the lightest one because you were going for value and color now so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to start by doing the whole thing in this color and I'm not hitting full saturation right out of the gate. Again, what I want is that gradation. I want that nice, even, smooth transition in the end. So the way I'll end up getting that is by really keeping each layer very even and consistent. So keep in mind, basic airbrushing, I'm keeping that air on the whole time. That keeps the, the needle clean while I'm doing this. And I'm just rocking the trigger back and forth as I pass across, essentially doing big, fat, wide lines with the airbrush. And because I'm pretty far back, about six inches, it gives me a nice soft spray that I can really control. Again, I'm looking for, you know, lighter areas as I'm making passes, like if I miss a spot, I want to go over that so that this first pass is really nice and even all the way across. And I am happy with that. Okay. For the next pass, I'm going to take that same blue color, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 
uh, some more daylight blue to it, or whatever color you, you happen to be trying to darken it up to. So I'm just going to darken that up. I may actually end up darken, darkening this up a little bit more. Again, this is the kind of thing, just like the black and white, you can make as many steps as you want. The more steps you're going to have, the, the even smoother the gradation is going to be. So I'm going to actually speed this up and only do four, but again, you could do 10, you could do 20. Um, I'm going to speed this up by only having about four layers on here, just to give you an idea. So I'm going to put a whole drop of blue in there. That'll really darken this up nicely. But again, the, the thing is, is it's the same color here that I'm using that was in the brush. I didn't clean it out. So all I'm doing is darkening that color. Again, this will work with anything. If you're going from one color to another, you can still do the same thing. Uh, you may have to clean the airbrush out in between as you transition between colors, but um, but it's essentially the same thing. So there's a little bit darker blue. Just like the black and white, actually going to get the rest of that other blue out. Spread it off the side here. So the next, the next pass is, again, it's going to be about three quarters of this whole fade, this whole gradation. So I'm going to come down about three quarters of the way, this time keeping my finger out of it. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it just like that. Now at the end of this, when I get down to the bottom, um, I am kind of fading it off. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just doing three quarters of the way down solid. If I did that, there would be a step there. You'd see one color to another. So as I get down to the bottom, then I'm kind of trailing it off to, to fade it into the, the color that's on there. Um, but it's it's much easier to do a layer that's really close to it than if I started with a super dark blue and tried to fade it all the way down to nothing down here. That's a much harder transition. So again, I'm going to start at the top again, make sure I have pretty much saturation for this color. And again, as I get down the bottom, I just kind of fade that out. So now I've got the second one. All right, rinse and repeat. So I'm going to take this, but this time I got, I got kind of a bunch of paint in there. Okay. So I'm going to add, I've got a little bit of paint left in the bottom there, so I'm going to add a couple more drops of blue. Now at this point, I'm adding straight paint to this mix, and it's getting thicker and thicker, so I, I want to keep the same consistency, the same viscosity of the paint. So uh, I'm just going to reduce that out a little bit more. And that will give me an even deeper blue. And right now I'm almost at the original blue color, which is good. It's kind of where I want it to be. So I'll make three passes on this gradation and it'll give you a good idea. Or four passes. So I'm going to start at the top again. <clears throat> and this time I'm only going to go down about halfway on this. And then I'm going to start fading it out to nothing. Now, it, it sounds like I'm doing the same pass because I'm, the air is on the whole time. The only thing I'm changing is how open that trigger is as I get down the bottom. As I get down the bottom, I'm pushing that trigger more forward, letting it out, you know, not as much, and that will give me less paint, and that will allow me to fade it into the next section. So that one comes down about halfway, and that's good. Now for the last one, I do have some a bunch of paint left. I'm going to kind of get rid of this. Okay, so I emptied out the brush and cleaned it out, just rinsed it out. I wasn't crazy because I'm still using blue, but I got just about all that out. And now what I'm going to do is my final step, I'm just going to add straight daylight blue. So this is definitely going to have to be reduced. I'll put two drops in here. And again, you have to kind of work with your airbrush. I'm reducing it quite a bit here. Um, but every brush will react differently. So again, keep that in mind. If I give you a reduction ratio for that, um, it might not work the same way unless you have the same airbrush as what I'm using here. So there's straight up daylight blue. And that will be our last pass. So the last pass, I'm going to start at the top and really develop that, that complete, you know, blue color, the one we're shooting for, for the top of the sky. And then from there, I can just really lightly kind of taper it off into the next section. So this top section is really only the top quarter, really. Now what I can also do with this color, since I've got such a nice even gradation all the way down, if there's a little weirdness area, say there's a spot, like if there really isn't, but over here if there was like, 
you know, like I, I didn't I didn't hit the gradation smooth enough and it's too light. I can use this color really carefully to kind of even out that as well. Um, even though it's super, like it's the most saturated of all the blues on this gradation, if I apply it really thin, I will get the same feel throughout. So it's a good way to kind of be your last check for this gradation to make sure that it's nice and even. So I can even, I mean, I can even run it down through the whole thing as well. As long as I really, really keep care of uh, making sure that when I'm down in here that I'm applying very little paint, uh, just mostly air. But that will give you a super smooth gradation from one color to another. Now again, I used all the same blue. You could have changed the, the, the final like half, this top half of it, and introduced more purple, say, or red, or green, or whatever color you wanted to. So I would transition between colors the same way, different colors that I would do, like in this instance where it's all the same color. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. You can have a lot of fun with it. So that is your Tech Tuesday for this week, the gradation edition. Graduation's important too, so we won't let that uh, slip to the side. But uh, today is about gradation, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I got a few tips out of it, uh, things you can take into your own artwork. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the like button. It really helps out a lot. As well as um, if you have any ideas for any Tech Tuesdays, just drop them in the comments below. Questions as well. If I said something and uh, you need a little bit of clarification on that or want me to expand on something, just drop that in the comments too uh, and I will get to that as well. So that's it. So for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, I will catch you guys all on the next one.